Hello and welcome to week 13 of Workout Wednesday for Power BI for 2022. This week we covered building a bullet chart with Deneb. For those not familiar with Deneb, Deneb uh, for our purposes is a custom visual that we can add into Power BI that allows us to define our visuals using Vega Light, which is JSON syntax. So here's my finished product where I have eight bullet charts uh, in a row. I put some sample data on data.world. And it's just really short data and that's what we're going to use to build our visual. So if we look at the data, there is an order column, which we need to make sure we use that order. And then there's a metric, an actual, a goal, the previous actual, and an indicator of whether being above the goal is good or bad. And then a reporting date. So we're going to start by getting our data. So I'm using the data.world connector. So there's the owner. And I've now signed in. There's my file. And I just always go to transform data. So I can check out all my data types, make sure everything's looking good. And it is. All my data types look good. I'm just going to clean up my names. I prefer they start with a capital letter and not use underscores. And then I'll close and apply. So the first thing I want to do is change the sort by column. Oh, I typoed that. I don't want the S on the end. So now my metric is sorted by metric order. Then I need to add a few DAX measures. So this first one is background bar. So I'm getting the actual. And then I'm getting the previous actual for whatever is selected. And I'm getting the goal. And then I'm taking the max out of those three values. So is the actual, the previous actual, or the goal, the largest. And then I'm multiplying that times 1.1. And you'll see I'm using that to create a background color so we can see where our bullet chart ends. The next thing I'm adding is a measure to tell me whether or not I am meeting the goal.
And so I did this because some things are, uh, it's good when the number is lower than the goal. And some things it's good when the number, the, the actual value is higher than the goal. So first I'm getting that indicator of whether high is good. That's my selected value. And then I'm subtracting my actual minus my goal. And I'm getting the sign, meaning is it negative, positive, or zero of that. And then I'm using a switch because I need multiple bits of logic in here. And since I had four, this comes out nicer than an if. Um, so pick which of the following is true. If high direction, our first variable, is true, and the sign of actual minus goal is one, meaning the number is positive, then we're returning a one to say, yes, it meets the goal. If high direction is true, but our sign is negative, we're going to return blank. If high direction is false and our sign is positive, we return blank. And if high direction is false and the sign of actual minus goal is negative, then we return one because that is meeting the goal. Otherwise, we return zero. And then I'm using that measure, that meet goal measure, so that I can get a count of how many goals, how many metrics are meeting the goal. So I just did a sum X. That's why we did one or blank, and that's actually going in an ancillary part of the report. But that's how I did that. And then I have one last measure that determines the color of the actuals bar in my bullet chart. So again, I'm getting high dir or high direction. Is the high greater than goal good? I'm doing the sign again of actual minus goal. So this is basically the same logic, but instead of doing one or blank, I'm using a color. So if we're meeting goal, it is a blue color. If we are not meeting goal, it is an orange color. Otherwise, it is a gray color, I believe. So that gives me all the measures I need. And then I just have some ancillary stuff around the report. And there's a title, and I'm going to go and customize my current theme. I mean my background 100% transparent. And that's good enough to be helpful for now. So I'm going to add a text box so we can take care of that max reporting date. And I'm just going to say last updated. And then I'm going to add a value and say max reporting date. There we go. I prefer that format. You can choose whatever format you want. We're just going to make this bigger. And it's going to be in that gray bar. So it needed to be white text.
And I just added some um, extra information to make the report a little more useful, to take up some room on the page to make it look more balanced. So this is all a um, smart narrative. So project start, I just made up, same with expected end and the summary. And then this refers to my um, meeting goals metric. So two out of the total eight are meeting or exceeding goals as of the max reporting date. And then I made a legend. And this is just text. I didn't do anything dynamic. Um, these boxes are just Unicode squares. And then a pipe or a uh, vertical line, I think, for the goal. And I made it the colors that are going to be in my bullet chart. So static legend, and then we can get to the Deneb custom visual. If you go and search for Deneb, you will find it and you can add it. So let's add our Deneb visual. And the first thing I need to do is populate that with values. So I'm going to do metric, previous actual, actual goal, background bar, and metric status color. And now that I've got those populated, I can edit. This is Vega Light. And I'm just going to paste in my JSON. And that gets me my final version of the bullet charts. And now I will walk you through what's going on here. For all Deneb visuals, uh, you'll have data, name equals data set. And then because I needed to do eight of them, I had to put in a facet. And the facet is on rows, meaning we're going to create multiple rows with uh, the same data-driven contents, as opposed to making multiple columns. And we're determining the number of rows based on our metric field, which contains the name of the metric, so customer satisfaction index, costs. And that is of type ordinal. Um, we want to align all of our rows. Our header is actually these names. And if we um, don't do label angle equals zero, we will probably get some funky results. The title being blank means there's no title that says metrics over here on the left. So we define some spacing, and then we get into what it is we're visualizing in those facets. Just so we can see a little more of it here. So on X, we have a quantitative value. We're not putting a title under there. Y is nominal, and we are allowing a tooltip. So when you hover over it, you should get these three fields. Then I pulled in the metric status color. And I called it actual color. And then I had a goal status color um, that I was kind of playing with, but I think I ended up deciding it was just going to be this dark black line here. So then we start the layers. And the important thing about having these layers is it's going to be one layer per mark or per piece of the bullet chart. And we need to do them in a certain order. So it, 
it's according to Z value, meaning what goes on top of what. So the first thing I did was set my background bar and that's that light gray bar in the background. I just wanted to have kind of an end point where the bullet chart is officially over since some of my goals are out past the actuals and previous actuals. So I made that a bar that was light gray and assigned a size of 30. And I encoded that so that the length of that bar is defined by my background bar measure. The next mark I put in is my previous actual, and that's that dark gray bar behind the orange or blue that you see. So again, it is a bar. I gave it a specific hex value for a color. It is a smaller size than the background bar, meaning the height of the bar. So it sits inside the light gray bar. And I assigned the length to previous actual. Then I have another mark that is of type bar, and these are my actual. So I assign it to the, the color, to the expression I defined above that is actual color. And I make it uh, shorter, skinnier, than the previous two bars, so it fits nicely inside. And I encode that to my actual field from the data. So that defines the length. And then my last mark is a tick, meaning this line out here. And that's going to be for the goal. So I just said the color is black. I didn't end up using my um, expression I started to define up there. But you can if you want. And then I said, okay, this is encoded to the goal field um, for the x-axis, meaning this is the position we're going to put it. The other important thing to do is this resolve scale so that I have independent x axes. If we don't do this, then all eight of these have to share the same axis values. And that's not going to work for things like costs, which are in the millions, when several others only go up to 100 or 60 something. So this allows us to use a different scale on each bullet chart. And then the tick thickness is three. That was just my design choice to decide how, how wide that tick should be. So for the most part, that is it. Um, we want to make sure we're doing Vega light, that we use SVG render mode. Our tooltip handler is on and resolve data points in the context menu is on as well. And that gives us our bullet chart, complete with the actuals in orange or blue, the previous actual in the dark gray bar, and the goal as a black tick. Hope you enjoyed this Workout Wednesday exercise, and hope to see you next week. Megan Longoria signing off.